Okay. Please be seated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed faculty and staff, parents and significant others, honored guests, and most importantly, our exceptional nurse practitioner learners. Welcome to our transition to clinical practice ceremony. I am Joan Vitello hyphen and I'm very proud to serve as the fifth dean of the Tan Ching Fen Graduate School of Nursing. Before we get started, I really do want to thank um, a particular individual because without her and her expertise, this white coat ceremony would not take place. So I want Sue Collette to stand up and let us give her a round of applause. She has personally put up with my uh, readapting my script for this four times now, right, Sue? Um, I always run into her office and say, Sue, I have a new um, edition here, a uh, revision. Um, so thank you very much, Sue. And I want to thank the rest of the staff. Those of you who are here, I know Max and I know Ann and Diana here, please stand so we can recognize you as staff, because without you, we're nothing. There they are. So in the backwards, Diane, Ann, Jen, and Mo, right? Okay, I recognized you. All right, um, without further ado, it is truly my pleasure right now to introduce Dr. Ter Terry Flott, 
He is our Dean of the School of Medicine, our Provost, and Executive Deputy Chancellor of UMass Medical School. And he is someone that I report to, but I refer to him as a friend and a colleague. So Terry, please come up. Well, uh, let me add my congratulations to you, uh, who will be donning your white coats for the first time in your transition to clinical practice as advanced practice nurses. And let me add my, my welcome to everyone here, the friends, family, loved ones uh, of our nurse practitioner learners. Uh, this is an exciting time of the year for us. Um, at this time, in this week, in fact, we have ceremonies that honor our faculty, but uh, we honor learners in each of our three schools as they make important transitions into the professional role uh, that they're seeking. And as, as with your training, this happens part of the way through your role when you've mastered uh, a lot of the, uh, the, the basic content, but you're still gaining that experience. And so we're very proud of you. We're very proud of, uh, of all of you. Um, I also want to congratulate uh, the faculty and the deans of the Tang, uh, Tan Ching Fen Graduate School of Nursing. Uh, you've done a wonderful job with these learners. We're really proud of you as we are of them. And I do have to uh, do a special call out uh, to uh, your dean, uh, Dean Joan Vitello. Uh, she's been a tremendous partner uh, for me. Uh, she's been a tremendous leader for the institution, a steadfast champion of nursing education at the graduate level here. And uh, this, this school is what it is uh, because of, the, of her dedication and, and uh, her really unselfish um, uh, commitment to this school. So this is a very joyful occasion. It's a, as we point out, it's a very momentous occasion as you don your white coats to take on this new role, the mantle of being a provider. Uh, as some of you might know, I am a pediatrician. Uh, and it turns out that the mission of improving access to healthcare for children played an important role in the development of advanced practice nursing. Uh, one notable event in the mid-60s, an assistant professor of nursing, Loretta Ford, and pediatrician Henry Silver envisioned a nursing role that could bridge the gap between healthcare needs of children and families and improve their ability to access and afford primary health care. The pair's intent was to educate graduate pediatric nurses to provide health care in rural regions, in, in these rural clinics in Colorado that they were serving. But this movement of advanced practice nursing uh, has ended up going far beyond that over the last now nearly 60 years. Now, my own experience uh, with nurse practitioners began uh, about 20 years later. Um, you can do the math on that. It's still a long time ago. <laughs> uh, when I was an intern in pediatrics at uh, Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore. And we, a very core part of our residency training in pediatrics was our continuity clinic. So no matter what rotation we were on in a given month in the hospital, we would come back one afternoon for our continuity clinic and see our own panel of patients with preceptors. And one of my preceptors was a nurse practitioner. Now, for my cohort of interns, this uh, remarkable woman did many things for us, but um, she taught us uh, things that varied from simple procedural skills that physicians generally don't know very much about, like giving IM injections, lactation consultation, general counseling of anxious parents uh, as their uh, particularly new mothers, first time mothers as they learned about what's normal uh, about those uh, uh, curious bodily functions that infants uh, have. And with amazing questions, uh, but you know, the, the grace that our nurse practitioner uh, preceptors showed to us as pediatricians um, uh, was was phenomenal. Now the value of, inter, of that interprofessional experience has lasted for me in my career. We had nurse practitioners as part of our practice when I went through my fellowship and 
in my uh, pediatric pulmonary practice. I'm a pediatric pulmonary subspecialist. And through the entire time when I was at, uh, at the University of Florida, including the time I was a chairman, uh, I shared my practice with a nurse practitioner uh, named was Don. Don and I had complementary roles. So we each had our own patients, but I was able to, with some of my patients, uh, seek her advice or her help in, in with in, when it called for greater detailed knowledge of um, issues such as adolescent rebellion, difficult family dynamics, and other other uh, particular behaviors that would uh, could adversely affect or distract from our, our patients' adherence to their their prescribed medications. In teaching me these things, she brought the traditions and, ex and expertise of nursing into that advanced practitioner team. By collaborating both with each other and with other members of our team, from social work, nutrition, respiratory therapy, the value of a patient-centered team was much greater than the sum of its parts. Now, I really enjoyed all these experiences with nurse practitioners, but um, what I have recognized is that who truly benefited from that uh, was uh, our patients, uh, who got really the best of both worlds in the traditions of both medicine and nursing. Now, for your own future careers, that kind of the, the specific kind of effective and fulfilling practice that may lie ahead could be in any of a variety of specialty areas, primary care, critical care, behavioral health. These opportunities are just emerging for you, and as we think about that, the possibilities of what you'll accomplish in your careers the, the, the seem almost endless. Um, with that vision, I have to say, uh, you are a huge part of our hope for the future of healthcare. Um, we, we as academic leaders in this university recognize that by what you've already accomplished and the amazing things you will accomplish, you're gonna make not only uh, the world better for your patients and their families, uh, but you'll also uh, spread the wonderful um, reputation of our school and for that, uh, we're very grateful. So again, just one more time, let me uh, get, offer my congratulations. Uh, and uh, I look forward to hearing the rest of the program from your dean. Thank you very much. Before I um, begin my remarks, I want to acknowledge the faculty because without them, you wouldn't be here today. So the faculty that have prepared our advanced practitioner learners, please stand and be acknowledged. Stand, please. <laughs> Okay, today or tonight is a monumentous occasion as we gather here to celebrate your remarkable journey, marking this significant milestone by donning this symbolic white coat. As your dean, I am privileged to be the first nurse to congratulate each and every one of you. However, in our evolving healthcare landscape, patients are entrusting you with their lives presenting more complex health challenges than ever before. They seek not just medical expertise, but also your empathetic and emotional support that you can provide. You stand at the forefront, ready to offer patient-centered care that transcends boundaries, aiming to diminish the fragmentation that exists in our healthcare services today. Today, as you put on your white coat, I urge you not only to demonstrate advanced practice, but also to wholeheartedly embrace the concept of advancing nursing practice as reflective scholar practitioners. Reflective practice, according to Confucius, teaches us that learning without reflection is a waste, 
Reflection without learning is dangerous. As reflective practitioners, you will be guided by your patient's experiences to gain invaluable insights that will refine your care. Through thoughtful reflection, you will amass wisdom and expertise, as Dr. Flotz suggested with his nurse practitioner, allowing you to gauge the effectiveness of your decisions regarding patient care. Furthermore, as you are advancing nursing practice, you will enrich the lives of your patients by encouraging them to embrace evidence-based practice and pertinent data. You will be the beacon of hope. In guidance in their darkest hours, proficient in identifying their issues and crafting productive, effective action plans. Together, as you embark on this journey of advancing nursing practice, you will make a profound difference in the lives of countless individuals. Please know that your nursing faculty and staff are here cheering you on every step of the way. We are profoundly grateful that you have chosen to be our next generation of advanced practice nurses proudly wearing your white coats for all to see. Congratulations to each and every one of you. The future of nursing shines very brightly in your capable hands. Thank you. Now I'd like to invite Rebecca Litwin and Angela Patterson, who are our DNP year three students, to share the meaning of the nursing white coat. Okay, hello to all, both here in person and joining us remotely. My name is Rebecca Litwin, and with me is Angela Patterson. We are members of the UMass Tan Ching Fen Graduate School of Nursing, DNP class of 2024, and it is an honor to be here this evening. Tonight is a joyous night, the purpose of which is to celebrate those members of the class of 2025 as they enter their clinical year. This evening, we get to come together as a school with our dearest family and friends to recognize the work this group of students has done thus far and mark the beginning of their transition into advanced practice role. This ceremony is the product of many hours of student-led initiatives over the course of several years with many champions along the way. A special thank you must be voiced for the specific work of both Madeline Lane and Kelly Garcia members of the 2023 cohort. For, for them, they were sharing their work on the history of the white coat and its symbolism that we will be sharing with you tonight. First, let us take a moment to acknowledge that we would not be here today without our supportive faculty. And finally, the world that is the GSN simply would not spend without the amazing work and support of Sue Collette. Thank you. It is no secret that the clothes we wear can be a form of expression, symbolism, and often a, often a reflection of the time and society at large. For this reason, as you gather here today about to don your white coat, it is of importance that we explore the history and meaning of not only the white coat, but the clothes and the forces that, is, that have led us here today. The clothes worn by nurses have greatly changed over time. In the western corner of the world, beginning of the nursing profession as we know it, is accredited to the work of Florence Nightingale. Her work in the Crimean War, her polar area diagrams, and her demonstration that educated women could make health outcomes were monumental assertions to make in the 1800s. Prior to Nightingale, nursing activities were left to prisoners, often working off their sentence, or to nuns wearing their habits as they tended to the sick. As the nursing profession took hold and became an activity open to the secular sect, nurses' uniforms reflected those of the sisters and gender norms at that time. 
These uniforms were typically ankle-length dresses with aprons for easy laundering, belts to hold instruments such as scissors, and caps to hold back the nurses' hair. Interestingly, some disliked this uniform, given its resemblance to that of a maid. These uniforms were often black, gray, or blue, matching the habits worn by the sisters. But later moved to white uniforms, as the nursing profession championed the principles of antisepsis, cleanliness, and order in parallel with physicians, and practically speaking, the whitening action of bleach. <laughs> Later during times of war, capes, for superheroes of course, were added alongside caps with stripes to designate seniority and status. Then during World War II, U.S. nurses were given clothes sim similar to that of soldiers. Nurses, who were as we know it back then, were mostly women, began wearing pants. Could you believe it? Many couldn't. But in the 1960s, pants finally became more accepted in women's fashion, with that era's wave of feminism behind it. Fast forward to the 1980s, where white skirts or white pantsuits were the norm on the nursing floor, and now to today, where scrubs of any color or pattern are readily available and worn by all. Not only have nurses' uniforms changed over time, but so have those of our physician colleagues. Prior to the 1900s, physici physicians excuse me, often donned the color black. During this time, to be seen by a doctor was often an effort of last resort. It is believed physicians wore black as a reflection of the gravity of this interaction, as well as the often inevitable death that would ensue. But all of that changed when the new framework of antisepsis, and with it came the color white. This change is visually depicted in the American painter Thomas Eakins, two works, The Gross Clinic in 1875 on the left, named after the surgeon Do Dr. Gross, and the Agnew Clinic in 1889 on the right, after the, uh, named after the surgeon Dr. Agnew. Only a 14-year difference, yet notice the gloom and barbarism on the left, and in comparison with the light, purity, and orderliness, wow, excuse me, orderliness on the right. And if you look closely, also includes the merciful use of anesthesia. Certainly a profound leap forward in the practice of medicine overall. And as we have it, let us not forget the presence of the nurse donning her white hat. From the time the Agnew Clinic on, the color white and the code itself on a symbol of health, scientific excellence, and importance. Let us fast forward again about 100 and some odd years to 1993, when the white coat took on a new meaning thanks to Dr. Arnold Gold, a clinical neurology and pediatrics professor at Columbia University. Dr. Gold, heralding the need for humanism in medicine, championed the white coat as a symbol of compassion, collaboration, and scientific excellence in healthcare. Dr. Gold founded the Gold Foundation, which worked to spread this message across many different healthcare professions. In fact, on the lapel of your white coats today, you will all find a pin from the Gold Foundation with the infinity symbol in the words, keeping healthcare human. This pin is meant to provide a visual rem reminder to students that in order to deliver the best care to their patients, compassion and empathy must be the hallmark of their clinical practice. Today, several healthcare professions don the white coat in addition to physicians and medical students, including scientists, nurses, nurse practitioners, physician assistants, physical therapists, nutritionists, administrators, and more. Fellow students, from your gap year or traditional BSN education to now, we all have had the privilege of being steeped in the practice of nursing. The American Nurses Association defines nursing as a caring-based practice in which the processes of diagnosis and treatment are applied to the human experiences of health and illness. We have had the privilege of being educated under the Tan Ching Fen Graduate School of Nursing Michigan mission to prepare nurses who embrace diversity and promote health equity to improve the quality of life and human health in the Commonwealth and beyond by leading and innova innovating in education, research, healthcare delivery, and public service. The white coat with its symbolism of humanism, collaboration, and scientific excellence 
parallels our understanding of nursing and nursing science, our principles and values of nursing, and our mission as members of this university. With that, I would like to ask Dr. Jill Terrian, the Associate of Interprofessional and Community Partnerships, to join us for the presentation of the White Coats to the Class of 2025. That was phenomenal. I just want to thank Angela and Becky and then Reginald, he'll be up here afterwards, um, for, you know, participating in this very special ceremony. You're kind of like all growing up. It's, it's amazing. It's really such a, a great honor to be a part of this ceremony and I really appreciate it. I, I got to stand in for Susan Feeney, so, because she's in Italy, but, <laughs> so. <laughs> so what I'd like to say is I'd like to welcome you, all of you, entering your clinical year for acute care, primary care, family, and psych. Um, as mentioned, this ceremony is to welcome you as you transition into advanced nursing practice. This will be a journey of transformative growth, of advancing and broadening your nursing foundation. And we're here this evening not only to welcome you as you enter your advanced practice, year, but to celebrate this important milestone with you, this rite of passage, as other important rituals you have experienced, such as pinning, which has already been mentioned, um, or will in the future, graduation, um, are ways we recognize and celebrate transition to new experiences or roles and help us intentionally focus on the transformation ahead. Let's start this journey together. So joining me will be the coordinators to uh, assist you with your white coats. And I'd like to call Dr. Alex Menard up here, um, coordinator of the Adult Gerontology Acute Care NP track. And would you please come forward, Alex? And as I call your uh, track, please stand and walk to the front and wait for your name to be called. So, um, acute care track, you can stand up. Thank you. And first we have, are, are you ready, Rob? Yeah, okay. Um, Dominica Boucher. Oh, you want them up there? Okay. <laughs> we'll get this going. In the meantime, Dean Flott, I love the mention of Loretta Ford and Henry Silver. It just, it brings us back, you know, to what really true interprofessional work together can be. It's amazing. You ready? Dominica Boucher. You can have your picture. Great. Eric, oh, Eric Grzbinski. <laughs> Madeline Hayes. Jennifer Conjoyan. <laughs> Patrick Kramer. Erica Marrero. <laughs> Grace McCullough. Eileen Monagal. <laughs> Dr. 
Melanie Ostegi. Sarang Raj. Brooke Rogers. Anita Tran. Robin Young. Thank you, Alex. Congratulations to all of you. I'd now like to ask Dr. Danielle Hebert to join me up here. She is the coordinator for the Adult Gerontology Primary Care and P-Track. <laughs> I think down there. That, that way nobody trips. That's what I'm thinking. And I just want to thank Danny. Um, unfortunately, Dr. Rachel Nimick could not be here tonight for the family track. So Danny is... Uh, offered to white coat both tracks. We're going to start with primary care. And we'll wait. You take your time. We don't want any accidents, although we, could, we can all take care of you. So, <laughs> all good. You all look fabulous, too, I have to say. All right, you ready? Janice Batista. Nava Hosenazad Baramjerdi. <laughs> Anupa Prajapati. Shannon Sherman. No porn thank tang. Wonderful. Congratulations, primary care. Next, we'd like the family nurse practitioner track to uh, join us over on the side, please. All right. Isra Abdeljaber. <laughs> Amma
Rama Agye. Karina Ashkar. <laughs> Jennifer Bugos. Alicia Cove. <laughs> Rochelle De La Cruz. Andrea Furland. Amanda Ford. Emma Glosman. <laughs> Julia Hebert. Ranjana Ja <laughs> Fernell Leandri. Annie Lee. <laughs> Olga Markashova. Alyssa Menendez. Sonia Muraz. Michelle Oliveri. I'm missing a page. Let's see. Um, Colleen's not here, right? Basarat Quadri. Connor Saliba.
Shelby Shaw. Rebecca Smith. Jillian Stacy. Rachel Stroh. Aya Tante. Monica Wyant. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> Next, I would like the Psychiatric Mental Health NP track students to stand and assemble over on the side. And I'd like Dr. Sherry Harding, who is the, well, was the coordinator now, uh, co-director of the DMP uh, track, um, co-coordinator of the DMP program um, to join me. She'll be putting the coats on, the white coats on the psych track. Daniel's not here, right? No, okay. Marley Bonacore. Kirsten Folks. Brandon Gentilly. Janet Haas. <laughs> Ellen Ingraham Shaw. Victoria Landry. <laughs> Emily Nolan. Audrey O'Neill. Raj Patel. Erica Powell Burson. Hey. 
Jillian Reed. Joseph Tulip. Jamie Yates. Thank you, Dr. Harding. Congratulations to all of you. I'd now like to invite Reginald Sarpong up, back up to the podium to lead the students to recite the nursing pledge. Thank you, Dr. Terrian. At the beginning of this deep dive into the historical fashions, fashion trends like Angela said, it is no secret that the clothes we wear can often be a form of expression, symbolism, and your don, oh, <laughs> sorry. It is no secret that the clothes we wear um, can be a form of expression, symbolism, and often a reflection of the time and society at large. Class of 2025, your donning of the white coat reflects a new chapter in this history. From habits to habit-like made uniforms entrenched in religious and gender standards, to the utility and equality of pants with pockets, and now with the white coat. It offers a new tradition for us to come together as a community and revel in both the value of nursing and our identity as nurses. Further, speaking from the experience of a student who has been in your shoes, Ready and excited to begin this next big step, I would like to offer a few pearls as you begin this monumental transition. Use your experiences and education thus far, but also rely on the innate compassion and beneficence with which you first enter this field. Today, we are signifying the beginning of this transition, which will extend over the next many months. There will be moments of great triumph, but they may also be be feelings of shortcomings. However, in times when you may feel like you know little, we are here and will continue to be here to tell you that that simply isn't true. Study as hard as you can. Write down every pearl that comes your way. And don't ever lose sight of the truly awe-inspiring learning you do each and every day. For every moment of imposter syndrome, there will be many more moments of brilliance. Run with those, expand on those, and know that more will continue to come. From experience, I promise they may begin to string together until suddenly you begin to feel it, the feeling of becoming a nurse practitioner. Pause for <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> All right. So today, the coat you are now wearing offers a new symbol and tradition to reaffirm your promise to the nursing profession. From today forward, set out to provide guidance without influence, provide resources without coercion, and provide care without bias. Personify the compassionate, patient-centered nursing model that has so expertly been crafted by the nurses who have come before us. As you continue on in your graduate nursing education as nurses, leaders, scientists, and innovators. Class of 2025, we ask that you all now please rise as a group to recite the Nightingale Pledge. We also invite any nursing faculty or fellow nurses in our audience to stand and recite with us as well.
I solemnly pledge myself. Repeat. <laughs> In the presence of this assembly. To practice my profession of nursing faithfully. I will provide care where care is needed. And shape the environment in which care occurs. So that the promise of caring may be fulfilled. I will center my practice on the welfare of all those in my care. Honoring the fullness of their humanity. I will hold on in confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping. I will refrain from any action and will not knowingly take any action that will do harm. I will maintain and elevate the standards of my profession through reasoned inquiry and faithful scholarship and by embodying the integrity expected of me by my peers and those I serve. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations again to the class of 2025. At this time, I'd like to invite Dean Vitello for the closing remarks. Let's give Reggie another round of applause. So I, I don't have a lot of concluding remarks. Um, I do want to tell you the way I often describe myself, and I, I offer this for your consideration, I am a nurse first, a leader second, and a learner always. Nurse first, leader second, and learner always. Congratulations on donning your white coat. Let's give him another round of applause. Okay, okay, now it's time to party. We're going down to the multi-special um, conference area where we have all kinds of drinks, libations, and food. So please go and enjoy and be with your family and friends. Thank you. Thank you.